on today's edition of the Art Business Morning Show, we are talking about POD, aka print on demand. Specifically, we're going to define it. We're going to talk about its benefits, okay, and why being on POD is fundamental to success in this business. Fundamental. This is normally where the theme music is playing, you know? <laughs> All right. So welcome. Welcome to another edition of the Art Business Mornings, the show that's going to put you on the path to a six-figure, a year-plus art or photography business. And boy, is getting POD correct a part of that path. My goodness. So I think I think we should start out, Nick, broadly. Um by defining POD, okay, and talk maybe maybe about quick it. maybe quick introductions first. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yourself. Always always good. I'm Nick Friend, um, CEO uh, and owner of Art Storefronts. My name is Patrick Shanahan. I run the marketing department here at Art Storefronts. Um, okay, and I think that I think the introductions are 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 you know well, we important to set the stage because we're going to go back even further into you know uh, my background in history in particular which, you know, is 20 years of fine art and photography printing, right? And yeah. so anyways, go ahead. Yeah. So print on demand, okay, formally defined or POD, formally defined print on demand, okay? And conceptually, it is not having to keep any inventory, not having to deal with any printing, shipping, boxing, fulfillment, or customer service, okay? And that's sort of the big picture umbrella that it's wrapped in. But what I wanted to do when, as starting out is one, most people don't understand your background or the history that you bring to this. And then I also think our perspective will be interesting in the sense that when we were coming up, this didn't exist. It didn't exist fundamentally. Yeah. And how much harder things were back then I think that piece is important. And then what I want to do is I want to pivot from there and get into just a long list of the benefits of print on demand. Okay. Many of which most people don't know. They don't understand. They like it's never been articulated at this level. So I think you and I could surface a bunch of things, making the broader argument that if you're not on it, you you are you you are harming yourself. Okay. You are harming your business, right? And 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 we'll explain that and let us articulate that. But why don't you give us a yeah. little bit of your background? Yeah, yeah, and I'll, but and really quick, I'll also add to that. Mm -hmm. We we say that as 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 people who really appreciate the art of making prints, jacle, you know, on various types of printers and doing it yourself. And when when you know, as I talk about my background here, you will you will gain a great understanding of that. You know, um, but anyways, I think I'm gonna go I'm gonna go even further back. You know, to give people a little bit of history of this industry and how print on demand came about. Yes. Um, because you, I, you guys, I've been in the art industry for 20, 22 years, okay? And when I got into this business, um, I got in on the printing side, on the fine art printing, specifically on the, you know, paper canvas, you know, uh, manufacturing side, right? So I was in the business of, uh, I founded a business called Breathing Color, which is one of the largest manufacturers of fine art canvas, photography paper, and metal and other materials, all for high quality art reproduction and photography reproduction. Um, I, I started that business in 2003, okay? Um, today, it is a huge factory in Austin, Texas, sells in over probably 50 countries all over the world to over, you know, 100,000, uh, you know, fine art printing companies, photo labs, individual artists and photographers, galleries, and so forth, right? Um, it's in retail stores. You know, you can buy boxes and sheets of it and things like that. And so I got a very unique perspective from that company, but I'm going to go back a step prior to it because when I got into this business in about 2000, 2001, it was right at a time when inkjet printing, i.e. Jacle, right, just started. Right. This is like the beginning of inkjet printers. So there was some inkjet printing happening in the years prior to that. All right. And you, you, those of us who are old enough can remember, you know, you had a computer at home, like laptops were barely around in the late 90s. Hardly anyone had one. You probably didn't want one, too, because they weren't very powerful. powerful. You yeah. had to plug in a printer. You know, there was the first inkjet printers were made. The ink was just 
ridiculously expensive. It still is, you know, but, but it was way worse back then. And, um, and you were able to just kind of print like one-off little things and, and you started being able to print photos on your printer. Well, the, the big printer manufacturers like Epson, um, Epson was the originator. Uh, actually there's, there was one company that was even prior to that. Um, and they made one big printer. <laughs> the name is, the name's escaping me right now. Maybe somebody in the comments can drop one. Uh, it started, I think it started with a T. It was just, it's not HP. It's not a big name that anybody would know on this. Okay. Anyways, um, it, it'll probably come to me as we're talking here. But when Epson got into it, um, they, they started creating like a 17 inch wide printer. Well, I think it was actually a 13 inch, a 17 inch, a 24 inch, and then a 44 inch printer. Okay. And, and that is really what started exploding print on demand. And it was empowering new printing companies to form, um, who were offering printing as a service. It also allowed artists and photographers to start printing their stuff at home and, and to appreciate how big of a tectonic shift this was in the industry. You have to understand how it was done before. Okay. And now if you've ever gotten business cards done or folders or you know, uh, brochures or handouts or flyers made, you can appreciate that, um, you know, and I mean by like through commercial printing, what happens? You have to order like a lot in order to have it make sense from a cost standpoint. Now, you know, business cards are cheap today, but I'm referring to, you know, back in the day. And, um, and so the same thing happened with art. The same thing happened. You had two choices. You had lithography, okay, which is essentially like mass poster printing. Okay. And that's how a lot of these things were printed. They were basically posters. And then there was serigraphy, serigraphs, which was uh, screen printing, no different than screen printing of t-shirts, one color at a time, one color at a time. Okay. Manually done on a screen printing press, extremely laborious. Um, and, and so the, the, the serigraphy print houses, there was very few. I mean, you could count them on probably one hand. I think there was three to five in the entire United States, okay? And what, what, they, what they had to do was, um, or when a publisher would buy a set of prints from them, they had to pick one, one image that they thought was really good out of an artist's uh, portfolio and say, we're going to go run 300 of these because you had to run a certain amount because you had to pay for the screens and you know all of these different things that are that are inherent in uh in doing screen printing for example um and in uh lithography right and so they had to gamble on you know call it 10 10 images that they thought would be hot in the market and you know what would happen pat like a lot of times it's, they it's, would it's, lose they, it's like it's the 80 20 like maybe one or two would hit maybe you know, and then the other eight would bomb and you'd be stuck with all of this inventory. They would be stuck with, they had warehouses. I mean, massive Costco sized warehouses of inventory of years and years of images that they got wrong, of prints just stacked, just stacked. Okay. Yeah. And so Inkjet solved that entire problem. It solved that entire problem, right? Or print on demand. And so, so then what happened is once Epson released these printers and then successively HP did and then Canon as well. There was an explosion. It was like a Cambri Cambrian explosion of little mom and pop fine art printing companies all over the country and all over the world, right? Yeah. Able to do one print for you if you wanted to of any image that you wanted. And so <clears throat> this ability for artists and photographers to get, you know, one-offs of their work out there was now possible. Okay. It didn't have to go through this filter where, most of the artist's work, you know, wasn't um, going to be available. Now you could get everything out there and individual artists and photographers didn't need a publisher anymore. You know, they didn't need any representation. They could go and either buy their own printer and make the prints themselves or go to one of these fine art printing companies and buy as low as one print. And if nobody wanted to believe in them, it didn't matter. They could believe in themselves, buy a couple prints, go do a local show and go sell them, right? Yep. And so that happened from about the year 2000 or so um, through today, right? And so the whole industry just exploded and emerged and new printer models would come out and the price of the printers kept going down, 
you know, and it got easier and easier for everybody. Color, to, color calibration equipment. Yeah, absolutely. Software, yeah, Ex different exactly. Types color, merge. color management equipment, all of it, like all the yeah. workflow management to make sure that like the colors would come out the right way. And all of these things were very hard in the beginning, but they got much, much more turnkey as a result of, you know, different companies like my, my, my old company, Breathing Color, um, we would give, we had like full blown step-by-step -step tutorials on how to do color management to get the, you know, the best output that you possibly could um, for your, you know, artistic or photographic images. Okay. So then here we are today, right? And I would say over the last like three to five years, why? And, and this is where everything has changed for the individual. Okay. So like every industry, you could study this in, in business or, in, you know, in any market, when, when markets mature, consolidation happens. Okay. So you have a lot of these different businesses, like tons of them splintered all over the place. Okay. And they're all essentially doing the same thing with very little differentiation. And that was absolutely the case because they all had the same printers, essentially the same media types. They wouldn't tell you this, but, and they had the same inks. And most of this stuff is all coming from the same factories anyway, with different brands on it. Nobody knows that, yeah, careful, but I know careful, all of them. Careful. Yeah. yeah. And I can't, I, I, I won't, I won't divulge, you know, a lot of it because uh, a lot of people who are still in that business are still, you know, friends of mine and, and all of that, but it is the truth, you know? Yes. And, and so, uh, printing companies, uh, started buying other printing companies. That's what I call consolidation, right? Like they're acquiring other ones and they're becoming big businesses. And so you ended up with, um, you know, a handful of really large art and photography printing companies, right? Um, that are doing massive fulfillment uh, for, you know, large companies and individual artists and photographers. You know, one of which, one example is Bay Photo, right? Who is one of our fulfillment companies. Perfect example. Phenomenal company, phenomenal quality, you know, all of this stuff. And, um, and you know, uh, is able to service the, 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 the high volume and the, and the lower volume with the same equipment, nothing changes. Okay. Yep. And so that's the key there is that people immediately, they hear, you know, they hear fulfillment or mass fulfillment. And it's like, yes, there are companies that are doing fulfillment that are importing canvas, uh, uh, from China, you know, and are, are claiming that it's like, you know, fine art material and it's not, and it's really cheap. And it's just like production, production, production. And it's like, you know, cheap ink uh, that's not like uh, third party tested for longevity. Like it's not light fast, it's not water fast. Meaning essentially, you know, as humidity gets to it or sunlight hits it, even reflecting over the years, it's gonna turn yellow, you know? Um, and that's not anything that you want. But uh, the better companies are very transparent with these things that they are using you know, the same Epson printer that you can buy, the same Epson ink and the same, you know, uh, branded media type, i.e. breathing color, Hana Mule, go down the list, right? And, um, and they're producing state-of-the-art quality, right? They also offer, uh, you know, what I call, like I call that like premium plus because it's like Ferrari quality, but then they also offer like Mercedes BMW quality, Right. Mm -hmm. And then they offer, and then they offer like, you know, the, you know, what's like Honda Ford quality. Right. Um, I'm just trying to give examples of like super pre like excessive premium, you know, Ferrari, right, Lamborghini, right, right on down to the Yugo. Yeah, exactly. Insane quality Mercedes BMW, which is where everybody should be. That's what I believe everybody, I think going up here, no consumer appreciates that. If you're, if your prints are like insanely expensive, like limited editions that are just insanely expensive, you might have a branding benefit for using those. And you do fall into that camp. You should probably buy those because I would be marketing that if I were you, that you use that material. But for, for you know, 99.99% of everybody else, you'll just want the premium um, rather than the premium plus um, because you're gonna make extra margin in there and you guys need to make as much profit margin as you possibly can, okay? If you're, if, the consumer doesn't care about that last, like, you know, 10% or 5%, and they're never going to notice and all of that. All you're doing is giving up your margin 
right? When you guys don't make enough money as is. So let's just start right there and just say that that's, that's where it is. So anyways, where I'm going with all of this though, is we're getting to some, some important things. These bigger fulfillment companies that are able to service anyone and everything, okay, have achieved massive economies of scale. If you guys are familiar with what that means, it just means that because they're so big, they can afford to buy in bulk from manufacturers of canvas, ink, printers, boxes for shipping, negotiating rates with uh, UPS and FedEx, and they have the lowest cost of everything down to the tape you use to close the boxes and all of the above. And so what does that mean? They are producing the highest quality stuff at such a low cost that you can't compete with. The nope. small printing company down the street, the local guy that you use and you trying to do it yourself is a complete waste of time because you might be saving a little bit of money on your own but you can't compete with the shipping rates. You're going to be paying, you know, the retail shipping rate. And, and so whatever you think you're saving, you're giving up on the other side, let alone your time, you know, and, and, uh, and your time has a cost $20 an hour, $50 an hour. What do you value your time at? You know, yeah. you have to add that in and then all of the waste and headache of doing it. Um, and there's many other issues that we will go down here, but that kind of gives, you yeah, know, the, and, um, and, the, the broader and perspective. So fascinating. Can you still hear me, by the way? Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's so fascinating because it's like we've watched this technology emerge, okay, the very first inkjet printers. And all of a sudden, you had this entire army of small shops and individuals that were empowered for the first time ever to reproduce art without that high barrier to entry. Do you know how hard it was to break in as an artist and be successful when this technology did not exist? It was extremely difficult. Extremely. Okay? Then all these small mom and pop print shops had the ability to start get going. The, the barrier to entry, I mean, this technology essentially unleashed the opportunity both on the printing side, if you wanted to do that portion of the business, but also on the artist side. For the first time ever in history, smaller artists just trying to get a footing, just get going, had the ability to sell their prints and with, with decent margins and without high risk. That was profound. We'll come to watch it evolve over the 20 years. Now, all of the little guys have been crushed in terms of the print shop side of things because the big factories, as Nick said, with the economy and scales, they're buying ink by the barrel. You're buying, you're buying ink, you know, a couple of cartridges at a time, right? They're servicing yeah. 55 machines with one tech. You're servicing one machine with one tech, right? You know, yep. they're not wasting anything at all because they are so good. They know how to maximize so it. It's it just, it, 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 it's been this crazy, crazy evolution. But the most profound part of it is while it's been bad, the recent evolution for the mom and pop print shops, okay? It has never been better, ever. For the artist and the photographer right it has never been better ever because now you not only do you not have to visit those print shops as we'll get into you but you don't have to do it on your own and you don't have to keep inventory and there are no minimums and you waste no time doing it at all and i, and I and would you say, can ship and you can ship globally too globally yeah. competitively yes. you know globally yep yeah. And then, and, and, and as a final, we, we, we have a list and it's just going to be some of the benefits of the POD and he and I are going to just go through and rant on them as we like to do. But it's important to understand at the very top, why do you need to be on POD? At a macro, what is the most important aspect of being on print on demand? You have to understand it's all about your time. It's just your time. Yep. You need to be doing POD because no one will tell you this. But the highest ROI on your time, return on investment, is taking the time that you get back from admin, in printing, in shipping, in customer service, in inventory and minimums and everything else, is just you being able to take that time to focus on bigger revenue generation opportunities for the business. In a macro, that's the whole ballgame. It is. And, I, and, I, and what I would call that, you guys, is like, it's leverage, right? Like, what is leverage? Mm -hmm. You know, um, without, without giving the standard definition, the business definition, the way that I think about it is, you know, what sort of ROI return on investment are you going to get on your time, right? Where can you put in hours of time and get an outsized nonlinear impact on your business? Yes. That's what it is. Okay. 
making your own prints and managing your own prints is zero leverage. You are not getting any outsized impact on your time. It is something that someone else can do and manage and get the same thing out of it. You know, now the, and, and, and where you're going with this, which is the exact right statement is the, there's only one thing that is maximum leverage in an artist business. And it's everything that all of you are not spending enough time on and energy on, and it's called marketing and it's called marketing. Yep. And when you remove these, these low leverage things from your plate, okay. And there's many reasons to do so. We're going to go through all of them. Right. But the, the, at the end of the day, the number one reason is because marketing is what will move your revenue. It'll change your life. Okay. It's going to get you customers, collectors, every minute you can spend on that to bring in a new lead, somebody that's interested in you go, you know, uh, uh, go do shows, what, whatever it is that you're going to do to do your marketing. Like there's things that you need to do today. And there's things that I know you want to do that you've thought about doing, but you put it off. And I will tell you as an experienced entrepreneur, like I, sometimes I think like that, uh, you know, you, I have the time to do everything, but I will tell you when you start removing things from your plate, all of a sudden, those things that you're like, I don't really want to do that. Like, ah, it's kind of over there. And you're, it's like, it's on the, I'm going to get to it list. Oh, you know, but I love that list. Yeah. And you know, it's important, but you're like, oh, I like, but, but it's just sitting there and you're like, I just don't have enough energy. It's because these things you're doing these things and you're still doing them. And there could be other admin things that you're doing and you're still doing them. And I'm telling you, they drain you when they are off your plate. It's like all of a sudden you feel like a new person. And this yeah. happens to me all the time where I I'm unloading, you know, I'm delegating things that I shouldn't be doing. And I don't think that they're a big deal. They might only take like 10 or 20% of my day, you know, but then they're gone. And all of a sudden I have all of this extra energy because I didn't realize that that, that 20% of what I was doing, Pat, was draining like 80 to 90% of my energy. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. It's like, you, it's stuff that you don't want to do so bad that like, it's just draining your, like most of your energy. It's not about the, the amount of time you spend on it. It's about the actual energy drain. And sometimes you don't realize how much it's impacting you until it's gone. Yeah. So at a macro, it's time. And we should also, before we get into the list, we should say, okay, well, what are the alternatives out there, right? And, you know, I talk to hundreds of artists and photographers a week, and I've been doing that for years now. And I've seen everything under the sun, right? But at a macro, your options are have a printer yourself and do the printing yourself. The other one is using a local printer, right? And when we talk about each of them, like it, it, it's important to say, and 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 I don't want we're, we're going to kind of dance around our topics about talking about every topic. But when you have to print yourself, does any of this sound familiar? You have to place the orders for the media. You have to wait till the media comes to your house and track it. Then you have to put the media in the house. Did it get damaged? Did you get did you get did you get a bunk roll? Did you have some issues with it with the sizing of it? Then you have to be the one printing it. Then you got to deal with when the printer breaks, and then you got to deal with wasted media space because you're not as good in color correction and head strikes and all of the things that go on in printing, right? And the argument that I always get, okay, is, but Patrick, I know, but I have someone to do that for me, right? Or, or you know, the margins are just so much better. And when I when we take the time to break it down about the actual time they're spent spending doing that, okay. What they don't understand is even if you're getting lower margins and it's cheaper for you to do it that way and you've got your sizes knocked out and everything else, you're undervaluing your time. And you're undervaluing the time, the, the value of taking that time that you're spending on it, that you're that you're lying to yourself, okay, that, that you're not doing, that you're not spending on, oh, there's someone, my wife is doing it, someone else is doing it, I don't have to do it. Wrong. I know how much time you're spending on it because I used to have a couple of them, okay? I've pulled hundreds of prints myself. I get it. I know what Me goes too. into that. Right. And, yep. and don't tell me you're not sitting there pressing print and then listening to the rhythmic head going back and <laughs> taking a look and looking over. You're wasting your time. Yeah. You're wasting your time. And but the other thing, too, but the other thing, too, Pat, and, and I think we, we didn't say this. I, I think it's important is that when we say you having your own printer or you using a local printing company, what that means is you're still you're self-fulfilling your yes. your print orders. You're yes. self-fulfilling it because. It's, it's not, in other words, the opposite of that is, is what we're advocating is for automated fulfillment, fully yes. automated fulfillment where you do nothing. Okay. Yes. An order comes in, it's automatically fulfilled on every media type. It can ship, you can ship global. 
Um, you've got your cost, you mark it up very easy. You know, you launch in a day, um, you can make changes to your media types instantly. You can switch fulfillment partners instantly, you know, which actually became an issue in the pandemic. You, like printing companies in certain states were shut down. They could, yeah. people had no fulfillment. They had nowhere to go, you yeah. know? And so to make your business powerful, to be able to scale it, these issues come at play, but auto fulfillment versus self-fulfillment, whether you're self-fulfilling by printing yourself or using a local company, you know, and even if you, like you said, yes, you might be talking about margins. You might be talking about, oh, somebody else is doing it for me or the local printing company. The local printing company does not have global shipping capability at a cost that global customers are going to uh, be happy with to buy from you. And we live in a global market. That's right. That's right. So the, the point is that two all the two alternatives, right? Like whether whether you're doing the printing yourself or whether you're attempting to use the local printer, the sheer amount of admin time that you're adding to your business is staggering, right? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. That these people delude themselves all the time about it. And 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 please, please understand, we've done the mass on this too many times. I, I, you're getting emails and then you're going down there and proofing and then you're getting another phone call. Is it going to be ready Tuesday, Nick, or is it going to be ready Thursday? Turns out we had a shortage on one of the shippings. It's not going to be ready till Friday. You're doing admin and phone calls and then you're interacting with your customer and then you're going down there and then someone's got to take it to FedEx and then you've got to send the tracking number. You, you, you don't realize how much these little time moments of time through your day are stealing are stealing the higher ROI things from your business, okay? It's just happening, it just is. And as a final, just to wrap up the, the three, all, three ways to do this, print on demand completely, printing yourself or using your local printer. The, there's no ROI in you doing it. There's no ROI in you doing it personally and there's no ROI in you going to the local print shop. There, the point is the customer, the end consumer does not know about all that time, energy and effort that goes in it. And quite frankly, they don't care. They don't care. I'm just here to tell you they don't care. This is a, this is another painful truth. Like everyone thinks, like, oh, I'm going to this place and I'm getting this high highfalutin branded this that and the other, and it's so incredible, and it's you know the 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 frames are rubbed down with duck fat and it, and it smells of potpourri. Whatever it is, right? The, the end consumer doesn't care. You're going and doing all that for an end consumer that is not going to give you any extra dollars, that is not going to get you more end consumers. And so it's really important to understand this, guys. We want you to be successful. And we are saying fundamentally, every single solitary best-selling artist that we see is in a complete print-on-demand scenario because that is where the high ROI is. Yeah. There's, uh, gosh, there's so many things that I could talk about in there, but I've got to tell you guys a, a great, some great information just from my experience, you know, as a canvas paper, you know, uh, manufacturer over the years. Okay. This is really fascinating. You'll love this. So back in, uh, 2000, 2001, there was like, you know, the first inkjet canvases were out. Um, the first, you know, fine art papers that mm -hmm. were for inkjet printing were out, you know? Yep. And if, if I showed you a print of one of those today, Pat, and everybody that's listening to this, you would you wouldn't even believe how bad they were they looked muted like the colors were just like they they look faded you know yep. and those and you know what those prints were being sold as limited editions for twenty thousand dollars you know some for 50 100 it was it was the market at that yes. time right yep. and and given that my company at the time breathing color we were in the business of improving upon these canvases and papers, you know, to make them the best in the market. That was our specialty, right? And yep. so our job was to make the colors better, to make the longevity better, to make the crispness and the detail of the photography as, as, as good as we could, you know? And so steps were made on that over the last 20 years and they're continuing, right? But the part that, that cracks me up is that it never, it like, it never mattered in like the price of these, in these prints. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Like those media types, like they, they sold then and they, and they sell today. And so when I see somebody, you know, uh, like get going crazy over a detail that like nine out of 10 people can't even see literally, none, you know, none, none, like or are just, asking, literally can't even or, or see asking it like you practically need a loop to see it. Yeah. You sit there and you just go, Hey, you know what? Like 
maybe like 0.01% of the population would ever even see this or notice it and care, but every other consumer doesn't. However, you're going to save $195 a unit, which is important to you because none of you guys are making enough money. And we all know that, right? Yep. And so that's why it's important. That's why I say the Lamborghini, like, are you not okay if you have a Mercedes or a BMW, like a, a five series, you know, or whatever, uh, 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 Mercedes and like a seven series, BMW. like if you're not okay, I can't help you. If that's not like, if you need the Lambo and the Ferrari, then go do that. Yeah. And, and, and again, like you, you can see it in the comments, like we have multiple people saying like, that was me, that was me. Right. And it's just, it's, it was it's a ton of people. Yeah, it's just, it's one of these traps that you guys end up falling into, okay? And it's one of the reasons these businesses do not grow at the clip that they could be, is that you're out there solving problems in your mind that are not problems. Yeah. They're just not and, problems. And, and I have to emphasize a point that you made again, which is the most important point. The most, the, you guys, the most successful artists and photographers, they all use auto fulfillment, all of them. And they all use, they, none of them use the, uh, the premium plus the Lamborghini or Ferrari media types. None. They all use the premium. Why? Because when you're doing, let me tell you why both of those things are true, you guys. Okay. It's not because it's random that like, oh, they, they just happen to. It's because once you start selling enough prints, it starts taking over your business. You are dealing with customer service issues all the time. And anyone will tell you that. But if you don't have enough volume yet, you can't appreciate it. But if, but you will reach that point where you'll be like, I can't do this anymore. I need to pass this off to somebody. People are, you know, emailing me about tracking numbers and this shipment got lost and this print, this box got damaged. You're going to have damaged boxes. You're going to have lost shipments. You're going to have a printing company lose your order. Okay. You are going to have an increasing amount of customer service in your business, whether you like it or not. Okay, so just mentally get ready for that. With the automated fulfillment, with art, with at least with us at Art Storefronts, I know that we take this to a whole different level, and we could talk about that later. But it's an important point to make that you know, in our case, we handle all of your customer service for you. Our team does. So yep. if something is lost or damaged, we do that because we don't want you spending a minute on it. We want you spending all of your time on the marketing because that's what's going to actually get you sales. You know, so we. We design everything around getting you your time back, but it, but it's a, I want everybody to hear that because it's a very important point. A lot of people who don't have enough volume, they're like, I got to make my own prints. I'm going to save $20 here or there or whatever. And then their whole business is limited. And we'll get into that in a second, you know, by media types and different things yep. that will actually help them grow. And, but like the thing they don't realize is that they, if they get to a point where they're actually successful, they're never going to be doing it. Never, 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 never will you be doing it when you get enough volume. No, it will it, take over everything and you'll never ma have it make sense. It will yep. only financially make sense to use automated fulfillment, okay? Once mm -hmm. you get to a certain level, it, it will not make sense uh, to do anything else at a certain point. So if you know that that's the case, like there's, th that's one hard reason out of many that we're gonna talk to, to never even bother, never even bother. If, if, if it were me and it was my business, and I was starting an art, a, an art business or, you know, obviously anyone I'm coaching, I would never, as someone who has printed more than anyone that's listening to this, okay, who knows more about color management, knows about every printer, ink, paper type, canvas type, more than anyone that's listening to this, okay? I was in that business for, for uh, 15 years myself. I'm telling you, I would never, ever do anything but work with a professional. Okay. And, and do automated fulfillment. You yep. not, it wouldn't even, you, you couldn't even talk to me for a second. It's like done. That issue is over. What, what, what else are we working on? You know what I mean? Oh, it's so true. It's so true. And, 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 and I'll say as a final, just because this is a different perspective, but all of these people come into these webinars that I run around three times a week, art business workshops, check them out. Love to talk to you. And they're there because they want to grow their business. They're there because they want to grow their business. They want their business to go to the next level. And then I get into this discussion and printing with them. Well, I do all my own printing. And I'm like, oh yeah, why do you do all your printing? Because my prints need to be perfect and I color match them and it's part of my craft and it's incredible. And I say, okay, and how is the business doing? Well, it's not going anywhere. Why isn't the business going anywhere? Well, because I'm not working on my marketing and sales.
you're not working on your marketing and sales. Why are you not working on your marketing and sales? Because I'm spending all my time working on my printing, right? And then I take it a step further and I say, is anyone complaining about the quality of your prints? Don't worry, I'll wait. Is anyone complaining? <laughs> They're not complaining. No one is complaining. No one. They will all would have been thrilled. And yet you're just set there in the weeds, just hacking at it and working at it. You're deluding yourself, okay, into thinking that you want to have a business. You, you and, and and you're doing that by saying, Well, I'm so busy over here. I'm so busy over here. I'm working on the business. You're not working on the business. You're working on something that no one no one should be working on. No, no one should, so you don't have nobody listening to this has a you don't have a printing problem. 99% of the people listening to this, you don't have a printing problem. No. You have it. You have a. You have a problem with the fact that your email list isn't big enough and it's not growing fast enough. You don't yep. have enough collectors. You're not doing enough marketing. Yep. Okay. You're not focused enough on the marketing. If you cared about marketing as much as the detail of your print that you know, if you're making it yourself, you'd mm -hmm. be in a different world. Trust me. The ones that are focused on the marketing, those are the ones selling by far the most. Where you're wondering how they're doing it. That's how they're doing it. That's they're different. good at marketing. They yep. are good at marketing, Pat. They've learned. They've built the muscles over years. Yep. You know, it's, it's not a, it's not magic. They didn't get there overnight. They spent the time. You got to put in. It's like the ten thousand hours. Yep. You know, from Malcolm Gladwell. Yep. You you got to put in the hours, and there's no shortcut. No. There's never no has shortcut. Been. Never so has eliminate been eliminate all the other stuff. You know, move as quickly as you can on learning how to market your business. Because everybody's business is a little bit unique and different. You got to learn how to get your business to market, how to grow your customers, how to figure out what content is resonating the most, you know, and get it out there. And that's the most important thing. Yep. And, 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 and we're going down the tangents of tangents, but right now internally, we are encouraging our customers to run something that we call the bathroom art flash sale. Okay. It's, it's an amazing sale and I don't want to go too far into the details, but in office hours yesterday, I'm talking to a gal who will remain nameless. Well, I don't care. I can call her out. She's great. Her name is Karen, but she's amazing. And we're, we're all going through this exercise of running the flash sale. And we need to run the flash sale right now. We need to run it right now, right? And she's going, well, I've got I've to run down to my print shop and get the frames because I need all these pieces framed. And the problem is, is that I can't get these smaller sizes. I can only get the bigger sizes. And I've got to get back down there and figure it out. And I'm like, Karen, Karen. There's 300 people in here. They're going to run a sale this week that you're not going to run because you're fussing and focusing on the wrong problem. No one cares. Oh, use the aluminum, use the acrylic, get this sale in the water. And she's just like, you're right. She's like, you're right. And I just see it time and time again. Artists self-sabotage. But anyway, I want to get, I want to get into the list. Okay. So I'm going to, yes. I'm going to roll through the bullet points and you just, you just rant on them. Period. Right. Number one, elimination of all the admin, all of it gone, gone. Order comes in. Printer gets paid, you get paid, order gets printed, boxed, logo on the side of the box, shipped, you touch nothing. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just underscore nothing. 100% automated by technology and software. You yep. get paid, printer gets paid. Printed, do, do you understand how, how much time there is in even just one transaction, let alone when you start cooking and you're doing 30 to 60 or 150 a month? The, the, the sheer profundity of that statement is insane, okay? Next. Yeah, and you said logo on the box. That's, a, that's one of our specialties. You yep. get your logo, your logo is on the, on the outside of the box for shipping, professional. Yep, zero minimums, zero. You get one order, you ship one order. You get one, you, you get 3,000 orders, you ship 3,000 orders. There is, there is zero difference in the eyes of anything, anything, right? Like just understand how fundamental that is and how incredible that is. That means if you hit the home run of home runs, you're good. And if you don't, you're just selling a piece of art to your neighbor, you're also good. There's, there's zero difference. This is the beauty. This is the beauty of this software technology combination. And it, it, like it wrap your head around that for a second because it's insane. It's insane. Like, you know, you have no idea how hard it was back in the day when you had to have minimums on everything, kind of like we talked about in the in the in the in the history section. And in and, and also with the zero minimums, you don't have to carry any inventory aside from your samples and the what you're using in your live art shows ever. 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 Talk about the talk about Nick, talk about the global shipping rates. Yeah, the glo I mean, look, the only way that you're going to have competitive global shipping is by working with the biggest and best fine art and photography printing companies. It's the only way because yep. they're doing, they have incredible rates 
with the with FedEx UPS and they can they can do shipping like so like with our fulfillment partners like I mentioned Bay Photo for example or Graphic Dimensions um, they have localized global shipping rates okay what does that mean it means that like if you're going to ship something to Madrid or uh, uh, Sydney in Australia Mexico right? City whatever take your pick yep. it's it's not quite a ground you know shipping rate but it's decently close. It's in the ballpark, you know? Yep. It's like, let's say if it's like, let's say if you're shipping something from LA to, to Miami, right? Across the country. Let's just say it's like one canvas print and it's like 1995, like $20, right? I think, I think the equivalent to send it anywhere in the world is like $34. It's crazy. So you, you, so you can literally have a global market of people buying from you, which is exactly what you have to do. Why, yes. why would you not do that? The world is way bigger than the United States alone. You should be shutting off nobody. And what we see from the artists that are doing marketing, you know, that are that are members at art storefronts, Pat, and we know this ourselves because we've been doing live shows with them and doing different tactics with them as as we're building out our strategies. We see we see like in a live art show, it's like a guy buys from Spain, a guy buys from here, a guy buys from Japan, and the artist is sometimes like, I had no idea this guy was even following me. No idea. But what happened? What happened, Pat? Did the guy email in, you know, to, to the artist? No, the artist had no idea. The person went to the website, added the item to their shopping cart, got to the checkout page, looked at it and said, this isn't that bad and checked out. Yep. And otherwise, otherwise, what would happen? What do a lot of artists do? I'll tell you, I'll tell you, because we even see, we see people that are doing self-fulfillment, even on art storefronts, you know, to their detriment. Um, uh, but you go to the checkout page and there's no shipping option international. Yep. They shut it down. They yep. literally say, I will not sell to you. How crazy is that? I will yep. not sell to you. Oh, you, you won't take my $3,000 order. Oh, okay. I guess I'll go somewhere else. Right. There's no option to do international shipping. It's like, oh my goodness, you don't have international shipping. Like how can like, how many people, you know, are coming to your site that might buy from you? You got to give yourself the maximum widest range of opportunities, guys. Global shipping matters. Big deal. And and and, and concurrent with that, and, and and we talked about this right with the evolution of the industry, where now you're competing with these big print on demand partners that buy by the barrel. Well, a little known secret to most people: when you are doing, when you just walk into your local UPS or FedEx or or DHL store, right, or your local mailbox shop, you pay retail shipping rates. Okay. It turns out when you're a business that does 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 to 70 to $100 million worth of shipping in a year, you get insane rates, okay? By which I mean rates that are significantly cheaper than you could just walking off the street. And the printers, all, all the big ones, get these same rates. And they're not trying to use the shipping as a profit center. They're trying to use it to lock in customers. So by printing with the big boys, not only are you saving money on the prints, but you're getting a cheaper shipping rate in most cases. You and know? the packaging. And, and the packaging cost. Yeah. I mean, dude, packaging is expensive. I know. You know? And I've been, you know, as a, as a manufacturer, as having a big manufacturing company, I'll, I will tell you, like, the, the more boxes that you can buy in bulk, the cheaper you're going to get. The more tape you buy, the more you know, uh, styrofoam, uh, you know, packing all peanuts, it. whatever all it is that you yeah. use, you know, packing paper, all of that. It's the same thing. And you know, what we used to do, we would go to FedEx and, and we would be using FedEx like almost exclusively. I'm referring to breathing color now back in the day. Yep. And UPS would be coming to us every week. They'd be giving us tickets to, to sporting events and everything, bringing our, our warehouse lunch, trying to get our business. We would hammer them down as hard as we could, Pat as hard as we could until the rates were so low that we were like, sorry, FedEx, we got to move over. Right. And yeah, we would move game. over. We'd move. It's, it's a game. We would move over to, to UPS. We'd move over to the new box company. And then, and then th now we got FedEx coming back and other box companies going, okay, well, here's our new offer. We're like, Hey, well, we gave you the chance for years. You better give us a way better offer. And it's this cat and mouse game. And I know this game. And that's why I know, there's no reason to try to do this stuff yourself because no. you're not even close to competing with the cost that these guys have. And it's just pointless. Yeah, absolutely pointless. So that's, that's, that's a huge, huge part of it. And it, again, that's one that most people don't know, right? 
like, you know, the, the fact that POD gives you the ability to offer all these media types that you wouldn't sell. Oh my gosh. Talk about it. This is the biggest one to me. I know. I know. This is the, I mean, all of these are big, but this is the biggest one. Go ahead. One of the primary mistakes that I see artists and photographers make on a regular basis. And, and I'm sorry to be extremely blunt about this, but not only is it as a mistake, it's arrogant. Okay. It's arrogant. Do not ever assume you are smarter than your customer. Okay. The point of you creating art and, and having a business is to find a customer and a satisfied one at that. And so many artists and photographers say, I know what's best for my customers. Okay. I know what's best. I know better than them. In fact, what's best for them. And those are the media types that I'm going to offer. Right. When you have POD and you have the ability to offer all of these various different paper media types and canvas and metal and acrylic and wood, and you get out of your own way and you remove that arrogance, that blockage, what you come to find out is you were smarter than your customers. You weren't smarter than your customers because they were ordering things that you were just by getting out of your own way and putting them all in the shop. All of a sudden you're getting orders that you weren't getting before because your customers know better what they want. They know better. Yeah. And so, so here we go, right? Like I could give multiple examples of this. We like, see it all the time. You know, all the time. Yeah. So to, to the photographer, the artist, like you, you'll see somebody who's like, you know, I only like matte. I only like my images printed in matte. I don't want it glossy or semi-gloss. I don't like the way it looks. It's all it is. And then, but you have customers out there who are like, no, I want your image and I want it glossy. I want it glossy. I want it on metal. You know, no, I don't want it on metal. I don't like metal. No, I want it on metal. And I really, really want it. You know, you don't yeah. understand that you like matte, half the country, you know, or, you know, likes gloss, right? You, you yeah. like it one way. Half the country likes the other. You don't like metal. It's one of the hottest media types for like, I don't even know now, 10 years. You've been blowing it. Everybody who's been offering one media type or two, a paper and a canvas, is absolutely blowing it. Okay? And we know this through our own data. This is not like anecdotal. This is literally like empirical. Okay? It, and and this, is the, this is the biggest thing with the automated fulfillment to me. You know, from our perspective with over 6,000 members at Art Storefronts, Pat, Biggest thing right here. This is the number one reason to have automated fulfillment as if the other things were not important anyway, but it's you need to offer all of the, the core media types that consumers are buying in every venue, okay? Sure. What are they? One paper. You could even say two. You could say one photo paper, like a semi-gloss or a gloss. That would be the cheapest option. Some people just eliminate that. Um, one fine art paper, smooth textured. or textured, yep. one canvas, one metal, one acrylic, one wood, and wood could be optional if you really, sometimes wood might not print that great with your images. I'm okay on that one. I would say try to offer it, okay? Yep. Those are the fine art media types or and photography media types, right? Um, that should be standard, like five, okay? B by doing that, Right, You're th you got to think about market size, guys. I've got a house with all metal prints, let's say, right? It's a modern house. These are being built all over Texas, all modern. They call it Hill Country Contemporary. Everything is hard edges, metal roofs, Pat, you know, like warehousey style ceilings. It's like all you have are hard edges in all of these houses. And so everybody has either acrylic or metal. If you don't offer acrylic or metal, and, and there's no frames, there's no frames, okay? It's just yep. acrylic or metal mounted on the wall. If you don't have that, you are not participating in that market. What are you doing? People love your images and they can't even buy it for their own house. It's insane. You know, interior designers, hotels, hospitality, they need these things, right? They can't even buy from you because you don't have the style. You've got like a, you know, a different, a more traditional style of just a gallery wrap, which doesn't necessarily fit in one of those or something like that. Okay. So you need to have the media types and offer those. And you, I, I'm sorry, you, you can't do these at home. You can't buy a $20,000 heat press and make your own, do, start doing dye sublimation and make your own metal prints. You're prob, you can't be mounting acrylic prints, okay? The big guys, that's what they do. 
they do these things. They, they buy $100,000, half a million, multi-million dollar equipment that can actually do these things and do them in a cost-effective manner, right? And so that you can just click one button, toggle from off to on, on. All of a sudden, everything you offer is, uh, is offered on metal, is offered on acrylic or any of these things, okay? And so yep. if you don't have these, you will see lower conversion rates, okay, on your website. That means the number of visitors divided, uh, sorry, the number of people who buy divided by the total number of visitors. That will be low. You will get lower sales, okay? Your business will be harder, okay? Every, every bit of marketing effort you do will have a lower ROI because you don't have all of the media types, okay? Next with the media types is merchandise, okay? Yep. And what do we mean by that, okay? We mean calendars, mugs, uh, shirts, sweatshirts, puzzles, yoga mat, like go down the coasters. list of all of coasters, all of the different things. Greeting now, this does cards. not mean, when I say that, you know, 20% of the people listening and watching this are like, I, am, I would never turn those on. Those are terrible. Like, I'm way too fine art for that. Calm down. Calm down. I knew you were on here. I've already got words prepared for you. Okay. Because mm -hmm. Pat, who was one of those people? Both of us. Both of us. We were both those people years back. Year, like probably four or five years ago. Like, no, you shouldn't be offering these. Were you guys? We trust me, we are we we lean way more quality and fine art than we do anything else here. Okay. Yep. That is a fact. And so we were very resistant to it. And then we started testing it, you know, and then we started testing it. We opened up to it. We started testing it. And boy, were we surprised with the results. Okay. You and tell me, you tell me that offering merch cheapens you and cheapens your art. Let me ask you, Nick, you ever been to a museum? Yeah. You have, you have been to a museum? Have you ever been to a museum that doesn't have a gift shop? Don't worry. I'll wait. Make the list. Make the list for me of the museums that you've been to that doesn't have a gift shop. I'll wait. They all have them and they all have merch. Yep. Right? But here's the but but the most important thing, guys, is that there's a way, like it, it's it's it, people think of mugs and they think of coasters and they don't think of the creativity that you can have behind it to make it high end. Okay. What can you do? You can take 10 sets of coasters and sign them or uh, create a collage on them, a limited edition where you only have 10 and they're very unique collector's items and you sell them, they sell each set for a hundred bucks a piece, right? What would normally maybe be like 30, 40 or $50. You sell for a hundred. You might even sell for 200 fine art, right? Guys, I've got these collector's items, never release these. I got 10 of this image or this style that I did. Um, and I've only got 10 and when they're gone, they're gone. Boom. You sell them for 100, 200 bucks a piece, multiply that times 10, you just made $1,000 today. You yep. will be blown away at how quickly those will sell. You yep. will be blown away how quickly those will sell. Why? Because merchandise items are impulse items, guys. They're gift items. And this is the biggest problem. If you're only selling art that hangs on the wall, you don't have any gift or impulse items that, I mean, look, art can be a gift, right? But let's be honest, it's not an easy gift. Like yeah. when's the last time you gave a piece of art to a friend and not as an artist, <laughs> like you bought somebody else's work and done that. Maybe artists and photographers do that more than usual. I have not received a piece of artwork from a friend in my entire life, life or family ever. And I'm in the art business. Everybody knows that, right? But yeah. these other items, you guys think about this. You do marketing. These are items that people can go on your site today. Ha like the first time they ever learned about you or knew you and they can buy it right now with no stress lower price point, you know, you don't need available wall space or any of those things. And that is absolutely huge. And so we found that some of our best selling artists who were not offering merch, as soon as they started offering merch, you know, they started with like coasters and calendars. Calendars are really good, right? Um, and they do it in a very classy way. And our calendars here with our automated fulfillment are phenomenal. They're not like the cheesy little thin paper. They're actually like a thick art paper calendar. So they come across as like a very high end item, you know? And so you can cherry pick you guys merchandise items and do it in a high end way and take advantage of the benefits that we're referring to here, you know, where of the lower price points um, and the ability for customers to check out on the spot 
and get you some money back in your pocket, you know, and more consistently on a monthly basis. So if you are not offering the media types and merch, you are leaving money on the table. You're going to have lower conversion rates and so forth. Shifting gears, and you better stay out of this one because I can say things you can't say. Okay. Go. Does any of this sound familiar? You get an order, you shift the customer the order, you get a call from the customer. I just unboxed it, and there's a huge rip in the corner, or the corner of the front, the corner is broken, or this. And all of a sudden, your bright, shiny day just turned into a disaster. Now you've got to deal with that. And then you've got to interface with the printer. And then you've got to file claims with the shipping company. And then you've got to say, I'm so sorry. I will do X, Y, and Z for you. I will make this right. Stand on me. You're going to have to wait a couple more months to get your piece. Do you know how often that happens? Turns out a lot. Okay. Turns out a lot. When you contrast that scenario, okay, in either you're printing yourself, or you're using your local printer scenario versus working with the biggest, some of the biggest POD partners that exist in the business, there is a dirty little secret that's going on, okay? The ones that are buying ink by the barrel and the ones that have the FedEx rates and the boxing rates, when this situation happens, do you know what happens? I'll tell you what doesn't happen. Can you take photos of it? And after you take photos of it, send the photos to me. And then what we're going to probably do is have you ship that back to me. And then when we get receipt of it and see that it is indeed damaged, then we are going to ship it. Uh -uh. None of that happens. Do you know what they say? They say, we have built in to our business model, this happening X amount of time, way lower than everyone else because we're so much better at packing. And you know what they do? They don't even, they don't want to see photos. They don't care that you just instantaneously print and ship another one done. Yeah. yeah. Well, some, well, sometimes, sometimes they do want to see photos. So just being realistic about that, like, you know, at a macro it, though, that's yeah, it happens. depends on the order and all of that, like that, that, yeah. that will happen. But the rest of it was a, was a lot. And that, that one, that, that part, you know, is, is gone. But you know, the other point is that that's like, what no one ever talks about though, Nick. And that is a massive, that is just stealing time, energy, effort, and joy. Yes. From but there's the a world. There's a big, there's a big part to this too, that most people don't think about or realize when you're one individual small account and you go and you call the customer service of one of these companies, you know, and you mm -hmm. have to deal with it, like you don't really have any power, you know, no, like no, you don't. You're, you, like you're not that important. Like you might not get followed up with, or you might be at the, the end of the line the, with, with our storefronts with us. Um, we do that for you. So we go back to the printing company for you and we get it replaced and we get the tracking number and we update it to your customer and all of that, right? So, and and the the vendor, the, the printing company, right, is, is accountable to us at a very high level. We're not dealing with, you know, like a, a, a new customer service person. We are an important account, you know? And so collectively, we're able to, uh, to wield, you know, that, that influence and that quality over, what's going on and to help you matter more, right? To give yep. you a more powerful like footing as you're trying to grow a substantial business. It's important. Yep. And and we're, we're coming up on an hour on Instagram and Instagram might shut off. If it does, Nick and I are finishing this thing on YouTube or Facebook. So if you want to watch the rest of it, you can go there. I, I can't remember if it cuts out at an hour or not. I haven't, I haven't done this in a while. Usually it cuts out. So some of the other ones that we talked about quickly um, that I think are important is one, it gives you the ability to prosper on new innovations and in technology, which are happening like crazy, right? New items being added, new ways to do it. First, you're able to add, do a calendar. And then through software and POD, you're able to do a dynamic calendar where they're able to, your customer is able to pick the images for yourself, right? So what about frames? Set, frames, yeah, you yeah. know? When you're set up, when you're set up with this, you're, you're taking advantage of the new technology, okay? 100% uptime. We live in some crazy world right now where things are getting shut down all the time where stores are getting shut down, where you're not allowed to go in, can't go in without a mask, this, that, and the other. When you're partnered with the big boys, the uptime has been 100%. Through the holidays, through Q4, through the worst times of COVID. So understand how big of an advantage that is, okay? We had 100% uptime during COVID. That's an important All point. Time. We had 100% print fulfillment uptime for every art storefronts customer throughout all of COVID. Not one shipment did not go through, not one shutdown. There were some there were some delays in shipping when the whole entire shipping infrastructure slowed down, but zero downtime. Not by much. Not yeah. by much. Yeah. The ability, okay, this is another huge one of POD. The ability to run your business from anywhere. 
literally run your business from anywhere, when you don't have to worry about printing yourself, when you don't have to worry about going to the local printer, when you have POD set up, I don't care if you're here, if you're in Costa Rica, I don't care if you're taking a sabbatical in San Sebastian, okay? You can do any and all of that, right? And that is a profound, profound thing. And there's, there's a couple of iterations on this that are sort of not completely clear to most folks that I love talking about. And there's the basic ones such as, you know, you want to sell into the North American markets and you live in Asia or you live in Europe or you live in South America, right? And POD, one click integration and all of a sudden you have the ability to ship locally into all of these various different markets, right? Or domestically into all these various different markets. That is profound. But one of the things that's been most interesting for Nick and I to see is customers that are using POD to be like a Bonobos or be like a Warby Parker, okay? In, in this scenario, I don't know if you're familiar with those two companies, but you get a store in the mall, and, and the clothing one is the best, and Bonobos did this first. You get a store yeah. in the mall that sells clothing, right? But the only thing that you have in the store is everything that the, the customers can try on. You don't keep any inventory in the store. And so if I came into the clothing store and I tried on a bunch of these things, and like, I want this, 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 and this, then you go, great, ding, 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 ding. You check them out, they get a bill, and then the order is shipped to their house. And so we've seen customers do this with galleries in high tourist areas in this country and in others, okay? Where I'm, I'm on vacation in a hot touristy spot in Mexico. I come in, I see some beautiful art on the wall. I want it. I want it to commemorate my vacation. The last thing that I want to do is carry something out and have to carry it on the plane. No problem, Nick. Here you go. Here you go. Where's your address? It's on its way. It might even get there before you get home, right? That is profound. But we see people doing it in tourist towns in Florida, right? Where again, these people are on vacation. They're like, I want to buy the art because they have the POD bolted in. No problem, Nick. We'll ship it to you. It, it, it'll be there when you get back or it'll be there a couple of weeks after. Like that is a profundity that most people are not, you know, the opportunities that you have, like you're doing local fairs and shows. You don't have to be schlepping the stuff around everywhere. You could just have the samples. Okay. And ship everything else just directly as a result of POD. Okay. That's profound. You could work from anywhere. Citizen of the world, which is, you know, even a bigger deal in COVID in today's day and age. The final one that I have that I want to rant on. Do you have any final ones that I glossed over? Nope. The only other final one I have is like, and this one is just such a huge pet peeve for me. And this is named, this is specifically aimed at you, service-based photographers. With POD, every service-based photo client gig you get on portraits, AYSO photos, uh, uh, Christmas cards, the Halloween uh, carnival shots, whatever it is, you have the ability to offer printing in your business without spending a dime without spending a dime. All of a sudden, your AOV on these sessions, like you're charging $200 an hour, goes up to $375 an hour just because you have POD. All you need is a stack of sample prints. We can go on and on and on about this for probably even more hours. But I think this is a good place to wrap it. And I think what we should say is the final. If you're going to sign up with us, you're going to get all of these things right? You're going to get POD. You're going to get the merch. Even if you don't sign up for us, if you don't have this bolted into your business, what we're saying is you're, you're, you are significantly impeding the, 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 your dreams, you, you accomplishing your dreams of having a positive your sales potential. Business. Yeah. You're, you're hurting yourself. You can't yeah, make like, if you want to have, like, if you want to have a hundred, 200,000, $300,000 in sales a year, you know, the way that you might have been thinking about how to get there is not the way that people are getting there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like you might think that they're getting there, you know, with a, one media type and that's it. And it's like, you know, the vast majority of the cases, that's not the case. They're, they're selling multiple different things. They have different niches. It's not one niche. I mean, we can go on and on about that, but, but yeah, it's th this, this topic is super important and just, one final point I'll make, like I was talking, like I mentioned frames a second ago, frames, frames are sold with like 20% of orders, you know, how, how could you possibly yep. miss out on the revenue of the frames? You can't do, you're not offering all of the different frames, you know, like trends and styles change as they change. We're commonly, you know, adding more frames from the companies that we work with, right? They're automatically yep. on your site, you know, and you could deactivate them. You know, if you, if there's certain ones that you don't like, like you could just like with the media types, but 
generally speaking, as an art bit, like an artist selling, why would you not be offering frames? It's just, it's insane. It's yeah. insane. You need every bit of it. You, you have a cost to acquire a customer. Okay. That cost is like fixed and usually is going up. You need to get every bit of revenue that you can, every bit of revenue that you can from them. Right. Yep. So that's, that's, that's another point on it. Uh, bottom line, audit your thinking on POD. Understand yeah. how important it is. Understand that it fundamentally can move the needle in your business. I think the one last thing that I'll add to Pat is that, is that this fulfillment program, you know, has been and is my baby. Yep. Um, as the, you know, the most experienced um, in the company, but one of the most in the entire industry in terms of printing and all that stuff. We went to great lengths. This is not just like a, oh, this art storefronts company came out of nowhere and it's just another fulfillment company. Uh-uh. This is the best fulfillment program that's ever been created. I will put that out there. Somebody show me a better fulfillment program than ours. And what I mean is like we have full transparency on the printers, ink, and media types, brand names. So like if you want to use like Hanamule paper or breathing color uh, canvas or things like that, you select it. We show you what that is. It's not some imported random thing from, you know, uh, China or somewhere else, right? Like, you know, like if the, if the, if the media type was certified archival for a hundred years, okay. You know, if the inks were certified archival a hundred years, you know, if it was, if an Epson branded printer is being used or an HP or something else, we show you all of that. Okay. And, you know, and we, we, we do all of these different things to ensure that this is the highest quality that the printing companies can't do nefarious things. We work with the best, so they wouldn't do these things, but we have contracts in place. They can't just switch things on us, right? When you work, when you work with other companies, they might switch your, the, the, their ink on you. That has happened many, many, many times. I'm sure a lot of artists and photographers have, like all of a sudden you get a print, you're like, this doesn't look like what we had. And then you call them and they're like, oh yeah, we had to use a different canvas. Well, what do you think happened? They got a different canvas offer that was 20% lower than what they were buying and they switched over to it, right? But they didn't change your price. No. You're paying the same price, but now your prints look different because you can't do that. You can't just change things like that, you know? Or they start using a third party ink and it's no longer an ink that is a certified archival, right? Why do they do that? Because they wanna make more money and they, and they, and they, they, they want the extra profit margin. You know, so these things are, these things are all buttoned up and put into place. So the fulfillment program is, you know, it's, it's, I want to say it's not just my baby. It's all, it's our baby. You know, we take it very seriously. This is your product. So, um, I think that's a nice bow to wrap on it. For sure. On that note, thanks for listening. And as always, have a great day. Thanks guys.